Hi everyone and welcome to my world. Today is a very spontaneous video I'm doing. Actually, I would like to talk to you about the score I composed for the Ryan Leach uh, orchestral competition, which took place in October. And you can see here, we were asked, the participants were asked to compose a music on this picture, which uh, clearly was related to Halloween. For the orchestra, you can see here the flute, one flute, one oboe, one clarinet player, one bassoon, two French horns, two trumpets, one trombone, one trombone bass, one timpani player, a harpist, and of course, a violin, uh, a string section, sorry, violin one, two, varilla, cello, and double bass. So it's not a very big orchestra. It's uh, only a 30-piece orchestra. So I have to say, you cannot expect to have the sound of a Bruckner symphony with this uh, amount of players. But uh, it's quite, uh, yeah, 30 players playing your, uh, your chart, your score. It's, uh, it's great. Here is uh, the Phantom Rider with Dorico and the sounds of uh, Note Performer. Let's go. So you can see it's uh, 1 minute 30 and uh, we had 1 minute 30 in all. So I couldn't really go crazy and uh, develop a lot. It had to be really straight to the point. How did I proceed? At the beginning, actually, I saw the picture and I took, I think, two days uh, just to look at the picture. I put it on my computer as a wallpaper. And I just looked at it uh, two days in a row without writing, uh, without, uh, you know, uh, just watching and trying to get the impressions of this uh, picture. And then after that, actually, I decided to have the music in my head before writing it. I didn't want to start sitting at the piano looking for ideas. I didn't want to write notes because I knew that doing so, I would look for special effects, something complicated, no. I really wanted some nice melodies, something that can stick in your head. So I just uh, took the time, three, four days, and I remember one day I was sitting with friends, we had a drink, and I told my friends, sorry, my friends, I have to leave. I think I'm ready to write. I really had everything in my head, and it was uh, the moment to go in Dorico. So uh, now let's talk about the tune itself. It was quite clear in my mind that I wanted to have three different parts. The first part would be the introduction, then the main melodies, and then uh, the development going back to the melody and very quickly to a coda, an extended coda. I was not very, very sure about the introduction. I imagine uh, something, you know, like uh, you are in the forest, it's intriguing, you have just this uh, violin uh, playing uh, uh, this note very high and suddenly the now noise of the forest. Something and uh, developing and suddenly crescendo and bam, you have the carriage uh, passing by. 
And I thought, okay, you can do that if you have five minutes uh, or more, but uh, you have just one minute 30. So the introduction is very simple, actually. It's a... That's it. Here, you can see it's one bar. Do, we, da, pim, pa, pam. And then there is one bar exposing the groove. I wanted to have a groove uh, which would reflect uh, the movement and the sound of the, the horse, you know, like... I think the, this rhythm was really adapted. It's not very original, I agree. There are a lot of scores uh, using this riff. But it's the one that I, I had in my head. I expose here the groove for one measure. And then I have the melody here exposed by the oboe. And the second time it's exposed is doubled by the bassoon because it's uh, beginning to be a little bit more dense, especially with the, the brass section coming here. So I wanted just to give some support to the oboe. And he's alone, huh? there is only one. So that's the melody. The melody. So you, you see that I, I like to play uh, with this augmented fifth and then fifth. That's a very, very old trick, but we will always like it. It's like that. It's just, uh, it sounds so amazing, uh, this minor six or augmented fifths, it depends how you say it. There is a little bit of dialogue here uh, with uh, the clarinet and the bassoon answering. And that's what I wanted really in this tune also, it's a counterpoint. Many times in uh, you know, orchestral scores for, for movies, I think it's really poor. You have the melody and you have just uh, the rest of the orchestra accompanying, but you don't really have counterpoint. So I really wanted to have that to give uh, this score a rich uh, consistency. Look at uh, the bass, just pizzicati. So it's, uh, it's quite light and dynamic. Doom, doom. And it's always the same note. It's a pedal, E pedal. And that's very interesting for the feeling because you have this melody moving and at the same time you have something quite uh, obsessive, you know. Always this note uh, coming here. Also, you can see uh, it's in 12-8, but I like to add just one beat sometimes because, the, you know, it's a carriage, it's in the forest, it's uh, probably, uh, you can see, it's not a great road, right? So at one point, it cannot be like uh, four beats all the time. There must be something on the road, uh, you know, disturbing the, the trip. So it's... Uh also those harmonies when you have actually the tension and uh, the resolution at the same time double by the bass I love those chords so that's for the first part you can see also here the the brass section coming but Actually, it's uh, quite light. Uh, it's in the low register. The trumpets are in a very low register, so nothing that uh, stands out, really. Let's uh, listen again to this very short introduction. Let's go. I just love Rachmaninoff. I think he's an amazing piano player. He's a concertos. No one plays his concertos as well as him. A great scientist of uh, the harmony. And uh, here, for instance, about the harmonies, which uh, 
it's really clearly somehow subconsciously related to fantastic harmonies. The second part, actually, I wanted to, to expose uh, something more lyrical, something majestic. And I imagine maybe somehow in this picture, uh, there was a hero who is in this carriage, maybe someone who is going to save someone else. Or I wanted to imagine this piece as a music for a Tim Burton film, you know, a dark mood, but always a hero, always a positive force somewhere. You have the harp coming here for the first time, and then the B theme, which is like that. Major, minor then, and uh, major, transpose. Minor, going to this chord. And there is also, you can see here, it's played first by uh, the, the, the viola and the cello, and then you have always an answer. To this, uh, to this melody. So it would be. Very lyrical. I just wanted to have like a, a ray of light in this tune. Let's listen to that. You can see that it opens up. First, it's played in the lower register here, and then the second time when it transposes from a, a, from C to E flat, it's played in this register by the violin. And uh, we finish this part on this chord, which is actually a B minor. Uh, but first inversion on the D flat here. And we have this wonderful relationship with the, the D minor. It's a, a very classic chord progression, uh, two minor chords, but uh, linked by a movement uh, of bass uh, in third, major third. But here you have uh, the bass just going up uh, half a tone, which is very important for me. Uh, you know, it's like uh, the Russian piano uh, school. The most important voices are played by the two little fingers, the melody and the bass. And the bass should be always very interesting uh, because it's a fundamental uh, element of the music supporting everything, but it also can be very melodic. Going from here to here, we definitely go back to a very dramatic uh, feeling and you see a, a confused feeling too because every almost every section plays a different rhythm uh, here you have of course uh, long notes the flutes uh, they are more like you see it's like uh, um, question answers between flutes and oboe here you have a different rhythm on the French horse, you have de do de do de do de do de do de do. Uh, here you have a glissando on the trombone, and of course the string section. So you have all this mixture of different rhythms that uh, creates suddenly like a, like a cloud, uh, something very uh, foggy. So you have this D minor going to B half diminished with little uh, appoggiatura and then uh, suddenly this chord coming here uh, always half step down and it's a, it's a B B flat 7 but not B flat 7 like like that uh, horrible no it's a That 
really creates something uh, dramatic. And leading to this part here, which is, I would say, uh, the development, where I will actually oppose different sections. First, the brass section, then it will be the woodwind section, and then the strings. So the brass section first in uh, the lower register. Amazing chords, simple, but always very, very uh, emotive, emotional. It's uh, just different uh, triad, augmented triads. it goes up half a tone and suddenly I wanted to bring something more uh, uh, brighter. So this chord is just fantastic. I don't know if you know this one but for me it's uh, you know if you uh, I just love this chord and I will never get bored of using it somehow, somewhere. And after that, you have the great crescendo that uh, comes from the strings. I'll listen to this. to play that with uh, two hands, but you, you, you see the, the kind of uh, progression. Chromatic. That's uh, very uh, Rachmaninoff. If you listen to the, the first concerto, you have, uh, uh, or even in other works, uh, you have this... Uh, it, actually, it comes from uh, Tchaikovsky, and uh, Tchaikovsky was really the the experts of developing uh, amazing harmonies on a, on one pedal note, you know, bass note. Uh, Rachmaninoff uh, extended that to something a little bit more uh, chromatic. And then you have this opposition in the orchestra. Uh, the final uh, melody coming back. Let's listen to that again. You can uh, listen the transition coming from this uh, B flat seven augmented chord, and then going back to uh, a very intriguing part played by the horns uh, that you have uh, here. Uh, I think it begins here. And then you have here the woodwind section and uh, the big crescendo beginning with the strings here. Let's listen to this. <laughs> with the woodwind section, crescendo by the string section, horns coming, supporting everything. Trumpet. Okay, and then the return of the theme. I just want to mention that here I used uh, muted trumpets on this uh, B-flat 7 augmented and when I played that to a uh, friend, uh, he liked it very much. So. Muted trumpets. Okay. All the different colors of the orchestra. Okay, let's go to the re-exposition of the melody. You remember at the beginning it was played actually by uh, the oboe and uh, bassoon. Now, of course, we want uh, some power, so it's played by the whole brass section at different octaves. And also here you can see the bassoon. Flute and trumpet, actually we have... Uh, you 
have this all counterpoint of uh, the, the bass being played and uh, this chromatic line. And trumpet and flute. And actually that is, uh, I would say, a little bit inspired uh, by uh, the Gnomus, uh, the picture of an exhibition, Mussorgsky. You can listen, there is a whole middle part with this uh, bass playing the melody and the chromatic line uh, on the on the upper part of the orchestra or the piano. Let's listen to that again. Evolves. I just wanted to mention also that between the two phrases of the re-exposition, um, here, you remember when I went from the B flat minor to D minor, here is clearer be between. I really play those two minor chords, but in this progression, this bass uh, movement, uh, major third. And then, of course, we enter the coda, the big coda, and we have a, a waltz, suddenly. I, uh, I wanted to create a surprise uh, going from uh, quite uh, close, from a 4-4 four, four, uh, you know, groove to a waltz, a uh, three-beat per measure groove. On this nice chord progression, Very coda. That's it. The melody is first played by the violins. And then the melody is repeated uh, on the violas and cellos. And here I like this uh, here, this uh, violin part. Actually, it's inspired by uh, the Danse Macabre of uh, Saint-Sens. I always thought in my head, okay, one day I will use it. So that was the good opportunity to use it. It's quite sarcastic. Uh, I like that. And then in the very, very last bars, I just want to draw your attention to something I really like to do. Uh, when you have a progression using a motif such as... I don't usually repeat always the same chords, like... Uh, something like that. Actually, I like to change each repetition. And for that, I use this technique in my 90s prelude, where I have a big... Uh, same thing. But each time I play uh, uh, this motif, I change the harmony. It's like that. I will play it again. There are no exact repetition, you can see. And I wanted to finish on a quite ironic or surprising note, which is this very almost a pianissimo note in the bass after this big crescendo. Here we are, let's listen again to this uh, coda. Let's go.
Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. If you have any question, of course, you can ask me in the description. Please subscribe to the channel and see you very soon again for other tutorials. See you. Hello, hello. It's uh, one in Thailand, Bangkok, where I live. And I just see that I'm among the finalists. So I'm happy. Thank you very much, Aurelien Leach, for this uh, great competition. I really appreciate because you gave us the, the opportunity to give the best of uh, ourselves. And congratulations to everyone. We really did our best. And uh, I wish you to succeed for those who are not selected very soon. Never give up, but always learn. See you for the next tutorial. Bye-bye.